This is Matt for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight So I'd like to be joined by Michael Conlon. Mick, um, incredible fight last night. Lee Wood, one of your former opponents, and Maurizio Lara. Um, incredible end to a fight as well. Give us your initial take on what we all saw. It was a great fight. Uh, you know, back and forth from the start, you obviously seen that uh, Lee and Lee and Ben are obviously coming with their plan to kind of keep them at the distance and you know, quite early it didn't look like they were going to be able to do that, but after the first two rounds, they kind of seemed like they got things under control. Lee found his distance, and after that point, they thought he was going to win. Now, previously, before the fight, I didn't say my prediction. I wasn't going to give it the social media to talk about, but I thought Laura would win in four rounds. Um, and I was like, nah, I'm not going to, no point in tweeting that there. I look like I'm there or some shit like that. I'm not, that's just what I thought. Um, but you no know, league at three day, and I was like, he's just going to win this. Happy days, brilliant. Happy for him. You no, know, uh, I, I wanted him to win. Um, and then, you know, he kind of, it looked like, it just looked like he, 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 I think he'll know he made the mistake. He, he, he was the one, he took a risk in trading left hooks with, with, with a hooker, you know what I mean? With, with someone who can punch like fuck. And he did, uh, and paid the ultimate price. And unfortunately, that was it. And I think I see a lot of stuff being made at the stoppage, but I think it was a good stoppage. Yeah. Well, I was going to come on to that next. Um, obviously. <laughs> Ben Davison and Lee are very close. Like the coach and trainers are in the fact that I was there with the mindset of I'll 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 go out on my back in there, but the trainer's yeah. job is to make sure they see at least the end of the day and they get on to the family. Um what did you make of the overall stoppage? I know you said you agree, but what can you understand why people are sort of saying maybe leave it or do you do you I can, I can listen. The guy has great part of recovery and he showed that in, in the fight against myself. Um, you know, he was he was down heavy like that. Very similar, probably if not worse. Um, he was down heavy in the first and there was a long way to go and Lucky enough, the bell went, and he recovered very, very well, and he was able to kind of get through the next few rounds. But at the same time, I agree with Stavage because I'm not known as a puncher like Mauricio Lara. You know what I mean? He's known as a a, a ferocious puncher. Like you know, it's it's not a risk you want to take. Someone's life, someone's health, and I know it's a sport, but at the end of the day, this sport is a sport of life and death. And you know, many people have got seriously injured or passed away. Boxing, so I agree. I think I think it was a great stop. Which um, no, I don't even think he would have seen the end of that round. Uh, I know there's ten seconds or seven seconds, whatever it was left. But Lara was he was chomping at the bit, and he was going, and Ben could see him. So you know, listen, I I said this in a previous interview because I don't know everybody will want to get my reaction for it, but like. I'm I'm one of the first ones to pray like throw shit at Ben, start to say start to say shit, but uh, I'll be honest about that there. But nah, he made the right call. He made the right call. Yeah, it's one of them. I get the whole, you know, it's just tight he's defending it, but when I because I couldn't see from our position like how bad Lee was. We saw him stumble, but I never saw like the face to say, yeah, let's go. Yeah. So seven seconds against Lara, who's going to have. More than likely a free hit. Yeah. Could have been that really. Been. I think you see him in the corner after, and it looked like he was still unsteady. I was like, fuck. You know, I, hope, I hope everything's all right there. Um, so, yeah, listen, um, it was it was a great call. Um, What did you make of the aftermath? I'm sure you've seen it on social media, probably. <laughs> um, Joshua inside, um, there was an allegation. Yeah. That Lara spotted him. I went and spoke to Lara in the dressing room and asked mm. him. Um, there was an altercation where it's alleged you spotted him. Um, can yeah. you hear it? And Lara just said, uh, basically, I don't like him. Uh, I want to end his career. Then I asked him again and I just said, so did you spit him? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> just goes, yeah. He's, right. he's, a crazy, he's a crazy little bastard. What do you, what, 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 what do you, what do you make of that? I mean, I think... Uh, <laughs> One of the worst things you can probably do, like really. Spin. Yeah, listen, it was it was one thing when the thing happened to me in the Olympics, and I was walking past the judges. I was so close to spitting at them, but I knew that if I done that, that was that was probably crossing the lane from from my side, and right. I didn't. But like, it's 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 really it's like the lowest of the low when you spit at someone. So, um, 
What about the Omega man? Omega man is a great a great build up to a fight. Uh you know, uh you know, he's he's laid the gauntlet down, he's spat at him. He's coming like with that ferocious Mexican type stay where you know you get that Marco Antonio Bar right, Morales with they're like the fuck you to each other and they're and they're going crazy at each other. Um so yeah, this thing he's, he, he he doesn't he obviously really doesn't like Josh. Um and he really wants that fight. So, you know, uh, fair play to him. He's he's got a bit of balls to do that in, in someone else's backyard. <laughs> it's crazy. Do you think with uh obviously Josh Josh has made clear to me, um either in interviews, um and obviously he's he's also said it, I think I believe to the broadcasters like whoever wins, I want the winner. I believe it was gonna be a city ground, bring all you can. But he has made clear, and I know people doubt this, but he's made it very clear. I want it before the end of my yeah. Career. He said, I said, I said, I seen in the build up, Josh saying that no, no matter he wanted Laura to win, but he thinks Lee would win, um, because he really wants the third fight and stuff. It's a hard fight for him. Uh, I know he wants it and stuff, but I don't think it's the right fight for him. Um, I don't know what happens next in that kind of little circular, that little triangle. Um, does Lee Wood fight Laura next? Or does he take the rematch? The balls in the him, I say he does. But yeah. from a business standpoint and using your brain standpoint, I think both of them avoid him and just fight each other. Yeah, that's the problem is now, obviously from a business standpoint, yeah, but titles mean a lot to people. Yeah. Josh, what happened last night? And I know they were firing Josh to fight Lara. That will have just sent him from... Yeah. His his brain is now probably that enraged him for wanting him that yeah. that happened for him to sleep kind of thing at that scene. We ironed we ironed that out. Yeah, well, I think I think you know if 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 Wood doesn't rematch Lara, Josh will fight Lara. So or vice versa. You know, I mean, it's, it's, they're not going to fight each other. One of them is going to fight Lara next. I don't know who. Um, but you know, the craziest thing about the whole thing was Lee. And and Ben actually picking part of the fight. That's the craziest thing about it all. They didn't need to do it. And I think from a business standpoint, it's probably one of the worst the boxing management standpoint, probably one of the worst moves has been made in boxing. The, the problem is though, on the flip side to that argument, and I get what you're saying in terms of planning a couple of <laughs> we always get this from everybody. Boxing fans always play pressure and say, look. We want big facts, we're excited. So if Lee Wood would have gone out there and chosen a lesser opponent, one that everyone looked and went, it, it, it would have been like, and I know you're not supposed to really care as a fighter, but he probably said, he would have, they, they, apparently there was talks of Kiko, and he, and he said, Lara. And it's in all fairness as well, he was winning the fight comfortably. Um, no, he, was, he was, he was, he was doing very, very well. But that was the problem with that fight. Give Lara... That was the problem with that fight. If we switched off, you were gonna get you were gonna get done. And, and and what happened was he switched off. Um now from where I'm coming from, it's probably selfish saying for myself, is I would say, why the fuck would you do that when you could go, okay, let's have a rematch with Condon, albeit a fucking hell of a fight for me. And you know, I was losing right up until that last point, but I won. Let's have the Condon rematch, earn double the money, put in a rematch clause. So if I lose, I'll get another big payday and I've set my family up for life. You know, fuck what people think, let's be honest. Um, he's got to think about his own family yeah. because the fans and the support and how you be remembered does not put bread or food or anything on your table. It doesn't do that. You know, people, people giving you a pat on the back doesn't put stuff on your table and doesn't look after your family when you're gone. So you've got to be smart business ways in this game because it's a ruthless game. People are out for themselves. People don't fucking make the right decisions for the right people. Like the person who's thought of last in this whole thing is the fighter. Um, so I think Lee and his team, if Ben and him are, are managing he, he, managing Lee's career, if, if Lee's co-managing alongside Ben for his own career, they've just made a very, very silly move instead of a smart business move. Um so yeah, uh, and that's that's probably my own self. We say coming in there and, and you know, Dave, from my standpoint. But look, I've had two fights since the wood fight, and I'm ready to challenge for world title again. And I'll have news on whatever happened next very very soon. But 
like it hasn't that hasn't affected me in that sense. Um, but like financially, it would have been massive for both of us. So I would have been, you know, chomping with a bit for that one. You mentioned obviously you don't know what's going to happen with three of them in terms of how they play this out because of that rematch clause. But you're, I say you're a part of it. You are a big part of this sort of this this thing that we've got here in this um, cluster of fighters because you had a rematch, a rematch of the of the. I mean, you had a fight of the year last year. Um, what's what's the crack with you now? Obviously, rumors of Lopez and things like that. How soon are we gonna get news? Uh, I think I'm not I'm not too sure when news will land, but I think news is imminent. Um, either way, whatever happens, um, I think I'll have news very very soon. Okay, I love that. Um, but I don't know what happens. By the way, I don't know what happens. So, um, yeah. It's good. I don't even know who I'm fighting next. So, oh, so you're not you're not even at the point where you know. Well, I do, but uh, but I don't. If you know what I mean, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. With it. They start sleeping behind the gym. The gym handles the last stuff. I just say who am I fighting, when am I fighting, and we'll go. The goal is still to become world champion, though. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, and secure my family forever as well. Hundred percent. Okay. Well. Let's see how this all plays out. Look, I appreciate you giving some of your time. I know everyone will have been wanting your, your take and reaction, obviously, because of what happened last time. But, um, yeah, look, as yeah. always, I appreciate you giving us a, a couple of minutes. Like, that's good, but don't make me out to be fucking bitter or anything in this interview because I'm not better because it fucking annoys me when people do interviews and they make me out to be better or something. I'm just saying. Right. I'm just saying. I, you don't do it, but I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what? This is the equivalent of... Right, let me give you an example. Right, if you just have a fight at me, going, you know what, Mick, just keep your guard for a bit more. Drop the hand to the body and throw an overhand right. I would never, I never do that, do I? Let's be honest. I, I, uh, I, I, can't, I wouldn't. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be uh, worth. It wouldn't be worth listening to the fucking message. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And we go, Matt, come to Belfast for the next fight. Someone assassinate this bastard. Come on, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah look always a pleasure talking we look forward to hearing your news I think like you said it is imminent and that fight last night I don't know whether it had any sway in anything but you will uh, let's see but yeah appreciate your time pal yes Matt 100% safe one